What's up, sisters and friends? Happy Monday, everybody. Y'all, I am so excited for this Monday. I'm so excited to kickstart your week with my sister and friend, Mary Kate. Mary Kate Rob is, I know, an influencer to all of y'all. She's a friend to me, and y'all send in the best questions for me to ask her. We literally had to pick 10 out of hundreds. So I'm so thankful that she is someone that y'all want to seek her wisdom. And I'm so thankful she said yes to being on this podcast and so excited for the conversation we're going to have. So without further ado, welcome to the podcast, Mary Kate. Thank you. I'm Thank so you excited. so much for having me. I'm super excited I about know. it. I can't believe this is your first time on the podcast, but it's the perfect time. It is. It's the right time. It is. I feel it too. I know. I'm so glad we started Sisters and Friends so we can do stuff like this. And yeah. this is like the ultimate, you're my sister and my friend. So yeah. this is literally, you, I know you make the most <laughs> sense to be on this podcast. Um, well, like I said, we took this to Instagram and Mary Kate, I didn't even show you, but like I have a screen recording of how many questions we got asked. <laughs> so my team went through and picked, um, about 20 and then I condensed it to 10. And I felt like these just really are questions that you can nail because this is who you are and who you naturally are and live your life. Um, but the first question is funny and it says, how long have you and Sadie known each other and how did y'all meet? Yeah. I was trying to think today, like what year that even was. I feel like it's going on like yeah. close to 10 years. It's gotta be. Cause we met in high school. We met in high school. Yep. Which I don't know if you remember how we really became I friends. I do. <laughs> Mary Kate and I became <laughs> friends in the most amazing way a friendship can form in the middle of a dance circle. Yep. We were both doing the Dougie. We were doing the Dougie. This was before TikTok was even like yeah, a thing. Really we before. were just doing it for the no, heck of it. We were not we trying were to be dancing. famous. No. We were just good at the Dougie. We were. And not a lot of people were good at the Dougie, okay? The Dougie was a theme uh -huh. and not everybody could hit it. And me and Mary Kate got and in the we middle. we did. Teach me how to Dougie. <laughs> Teach me how to Dougie. And I was like, this girl got swag. That was so fun. It was so fun. So that was literally like probably... 2013 yeah or we, 14. Remember we were going to that taylor swift concert we're at taylor swift concert yeah yes and i still regret wearing chevron <laughs> i was wearing this <laughs> massive chevron dress chevron even, it was like the trend of the year like it everybody was, was wearing was. chevron and i even wasn't like crazy about it the whole year i was like <laughs> Okay, this is happening. I'm seeing the trend. I don't think I'm going to commit. And then Taylor Swift, I was like, boom. It was like my Chevron, Chevron moment. It was like the biggest Chevron pattern red. And now your picture with Taylor Swift. Is the my Chevron dress. That is Chevron. You know what? Taylor Swift did tell me my dress was epic, but I think Worth she it. was lying. <laughs> I think she was lying. <laughs> Hindsight, 2020. Um, so we met there and we were yeah. really close in high school. We literally. So that was before me and John Link were dating. Yes, before me and John Link were dating. We were friends. We were really close. We spent the night together. Together. remember like every, every Wednesday week. and Friday because mm -hmm. I would stay with y'all after games because mm -hmm. y'all lived closer to the school yeah. and you would stay with me after like Bible study at yeah. our house and we were we we I literally had a pint of ice cream at y'all's house with my name on it I remember it I do remember that's it. how close we uh -huh. were and man what we watched Grey's Anatomy together we watched uh Naked and Afraid Naked and Afraid that was <laughs> very show. interesting show choices <laughs> Um, so yeah, we were just really we good did. high school friends. And then you and John like started dating on the, what was it? Itties of Itties March. of March. March 50th. I accidentally called it Itties and it uh, stuck. <laughs> every year now we celebrate the Itties. <laughs> the Itties of March. So you and John Luke started dating and um, mm -hmm. that was crazy because you were yeah. one of my best friends and you started dating my brother, yeah. which is like the stereotypical story that you always hear. And I remember it was funny because remember my dad was like, was my dad, was it you or Kelly that he was like, wait, probably who's this? Me. Was like, probably dad, me. she's been literally spending the night with us for the last year or two. Yeah. Every Wednesday night. And now like you're dating John Luke. Yep. So it was like such a crazy moment. But a lot of people ask how you and John Luke met. So we can also go there. Yeah. How John we met at summer camp, which is ironic since now John Luke obviously runs a summer camp. But I think that was even just the Lord working you that's know, cool. yeah. just already, like Sweet. the fact that we met at a summer camp and now that's like one of his jobs. Yeah. Um. So we met when we were, I guess we were 15. Yeah, y'all we met both 15. a while before y'all started dating. Yeah, we did. So we and met before we you even came to our school, right? Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. met at that summer camp. We met at summer camp and then, uh, but we didn't date until a couple years later. Yeah. And you and I became friends in the meantime. But it was funny because the first I'd ever heard of you him and I were on like this um, Survivor Day team and we were doing wall sits. Oh, no. And way. we were both selected. Like, I was a girl from our team and he was a boy from our team. And that was like one of our first conversations. We were literally on a wall, that is like so doing wall funny. sits together. I don't even remember if we won or what, but 
we were like, let's talk and like get our our minds off the pain. And so, so the first thing I said was like, so like, tell me about your family. Like, do you have any siblings? And he was like, oh, I have a sister named Sadie. And That's so that so was funny. like the first I'd ever heard of you. And um. So that was that's like the start so of our, our relationship. Oh, that's awesome. That's so crazy. And then I remember when y'all came to our school because yeah. we went to a small school. And everybody was like, who are the new girls? And we all thought you all were so beautiful. And we everyone thought you were like the coolest person ever. Oh, my gosh. Because you had like, I don't know if you had a perm, but you had like yeah, this I did. wavy I'm hair. Yeah, sure I did. Well, no, everybody thought it was very cool. You were no. rocking your perm. <laughs> and your outfits were so cool. And you were like the new cool girl at school. And then that's your sister funny. shadowed me because she was yeah. in my grade. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot and about that. Which is so funny. Yeah. So we were all good friends. And then how did you like break out of the friend zone with you? Or not even friend zone. Um, it's my sister's friend zone. It's a whole different ball game. I literally have to think about it to even remember. I can't even remember how that happened. It was just all of a sudden y'all were together. I think I said something to you. I think I was like, I don't know. I just was like not really just seeing John Luke as a friend. And then one day I was, I think I told you I was like, Hey, I think I actually like John Luke. And you're like, yeah. Mary Kate, he's liked you for however I long. I kind of just that. gave up because you kept, I, I mean, I was like hard friend zoning him. Yes. I remember one time we were, he was, he rode to church with me and we were just going as like friends. And he literally like, <laughs> <laughs> do you remember me telling you? No, but I can totally see this. <laughs> no, it's even funnier. But it's like he literally like reaches over to like grab my hand yeah. and like he grabs my hand and I just. No. <laughs> Did y'all talk about like, it? like pull it in the back and put it in my lap. No way. Did y'all ever discuss this after? And this was just like a one time I think we thing. had. I think like. I mean, after we got married. I think we did like laugh about it. the ever. What a bold move. From both of y'all. Yeah, I know. A bold move to grab the hand and a very bold move to slip that hand away. I know. I'm kind of surprised away. that I pulled it away. <laughs> I know. That's so funny. But I was like very hard friend zoning him. And then finally I was like, I think it was when he finally kind of stopped pursuing me. I was like, huh. Oh, wait. I think I actually did like that. I can see and that. And like him. I do remember that. And I remember it being on a plane. We are all going somewhere. Yes. And it was on March 15th yes. or whatever. And I think I just said, so are y'all dating? Yes, And then y'all were like. Well, I guess. I guess. And yeah. then I was like, it's official. So I pretty much put that stamp on I think you did. I think you did. You pushed it towards the like, I did. official. I just knew it needed to happen. And then y'all got engaged we did. very shortly we after. Did. So that was March. I had March. We started dating. And then we got engaged in October yeah. on his 19th birthday. That was crazy. How insane is that? That was insane. I think, ni- yeah. That was when yeah. I was on Dance with the Stars. Yeah. Me and Derek Huff, because it was it happened to be switch up week. Yeah. And Derek came back with me and we came for the engagement party. And it was like so crazy. I was like, why is Derek Huff I in even, Louisiana? I don't even remember him being there. That is so he funny. Was there. I don't think I even knew that. I don't think he that. came to the party, but he was like, he was in Monroe with me. Yeah. We were practicing every day at the Wellness Center gym. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Because I was like, I have to be there for their engagement. And yeah. it was just so exciting. So that's crazy. It is. So cool. So a lot of girls who listen to the podcast, um, well, we have all different age ranges, but a lot of them are in college. And a couple girls to end some college questions that I thought we should cover because you and John Luke got married really young. And which we we're going to talk about that too. But then y'all went to college together. Yeah. So you were previously in college because you're yeah. you're older in school than uh-huh. him. But then y'all went to college together. And I know that was um, a hard season in some ways. Yeah. But someone asked, what advice do you have for college girls in general? And how do you combat spiritual warfare while in college? Which I thought was a really big and specific mm-hmm. question. Um, and I'm glad that this person sees it for what it is, a spiritual yeah. warfare. Because I think a lot of times, you know, you can just see things at surfacey level. And she's yeah. like, no, this is spiritual warfare. So can you remember back when y'all went to college having some of that and experiencing some of that? So y'all have heard me talk about Native before. I love Native so much. Their thoughtful formulation behind their product is something that I've always loved because they understand it's not just what's on the inside that counts, but it's also what's on the outside. And y'all, that is a word. Native gets it. This is ultimately why Native is releasing their deodorant because it's what is in the product that matters. It is now actually in a new and improved plastic-free packaging, which I gotta say is super cute. And hey, why not have some cute deodorant? One thing I love about Native is how they are 
are doing their part and recycling by packaging their deodorant in 100% plastic-free packaging. Just like all of Native's other deodorants, their plastic-free deodorant is aluminum and paraben-free. It kills odor-causing bacteria and has 24-hour protection from odor, which is great. Don't we all wanna be smelling good? Yes, we do. We should, all right? Let's stay fresh, people. Native has so many scents to choose from. My personal favorite is actually their Lavender Rose. I also like their Cucumber Mint. I like to just stay fresh, and these are great. Native deodorant also goes on super smoothly and stays through workouts, which is a win. So if you're ready to try plastic-free deodorant, go to nativedeo.com slash woe or use the promo code woe at checkout to get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash woe or use the promo code woe at checkout for 20% off your first order. Funny because like reading that question, I was like, I don't even think that was super on my radar, yeah. like in college. Um, and I do remember reading Priscilla Shire's book. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when oh we read God. that? Yeah. And I feel like that was kind of like, that was kind of giving me an idea of like, okay, there there are things going on. Um, but I feel like the biggest thing for me in college was just the friends that I was making. Yeah. Um, and just realizing like it really matters mm -hmm. who you hang out with. And like, mm -hmm. you know, they say like you're the sum of the, what is it, like seven yeah, people that you so hang true. around. And um, looking back in college, like, man, I just had, like, the greatest friends. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that shaped so much that's of who so I even true. am today. Yeah. You know, and that's happening when you're yeah. you're young, 18, so 22 true. years old. Like, but already just so important to be making those yeah. just like-minded friendships that's of people so who are going to push you closer to Christ mm -hmm. and not, that's you good. know, drag you in an opposite direction. Yes. Which can very <laughs> easily... You know, you got to make your decision. Especially in college. When you get to college. Yeah. That's such great advice because I think a lot of times, like, when people go to college, you're so desperate for friendship mm -hmm. that you're almost willing to be with whoever will accept you. Yeah. But it is so important, especially in college, that you don't just go with the crowd that accepts yeah. you, but you really stand f firm in who you mm -hmm. are and what you believe, and then you let God bring that those friendships yeah. naturally together. And I was actually just at lunch with a friend today, and we were talking about college, and mm -hmm. she said you know, it was the first time that I made such good friends and so many friends mm -hmm. by being naturally just who I was yeah. and created to be. And I think there's just such a temptation there to, to not be that mm -hmm. and to create, you know, a false image of who you want yeah. people to think. But then you get stuck in four years of yeah, built on something that's not yeah. even true. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen people walk through that. Mm -hmm. But y'all did have the best friends we in did. college. We had and they're really so similar friends. to y'all, too. Yeah. How did you – did you, like, when you first moved there, did you start meeting people or, or did it take a while? Well, it was so – it was definitely weird for us because we had just come from Duck Dynasty. And so that was, like, just kind yeah. of a weird – I feel like it took us a little while to, like, make friends because, I don't know, people were just kind of, like – Weird around People this. People really weird. I they remember y'all calling mom one day and saying y'all felt like wild animals. Yes. It was so sad. I remember that exact. It said people it, like looked at y'all like y'all were just so different. Yeah. And y'all are just two people who literally needed friends too. Yeah. And we like we did, and we needed friends. And um, so I feel like it took a little while. Um, and I, that's even some advice I think I would give is like the friends you meet like immediately it's okay if like you have different mm -hmm. friends it's like it might take you a little while yeah. to make the friends but um I remember some of our friends it was just a funny because some people either they'd come up to us and like wanted a picture with us or they would just like not want to come up to us because they didn't want to seem weird yeah but then it was just they weren't coming up to us yeah. and, we're like, and then you're like well, we, don't do have friends. Friends. Yeah. we do want to meet people um and so we finally did and just had the best. That's awesome. Best time. I do think that that's a good point that it'll pull out because not everybody that shows up to your campus is going to be super famous, you know, <laughs> but a lot of people on campus, like, I think people have like a misunderstanding of who they are, you know, mm -hmm. um, or a false perspective. And it's just always good. I always say you can never get regret like inviting someone to yeah. do something like it's yeah. never gonna go wrong like an invite even if they say no is like it always goes such a long way yes, and so people like overthink it they're like well what if I invite her and then she thinks I'm weird mm -hmm. because then she thinks I'm using her what if I don't invite her because then I don't want her to seem like I'm trying to like be your friend and it's like just don't overthink it just invite yeah. them yeah. just invite them to lunch invite yeah, them to coffee so like good. hang out with them and 
that can just go such a long way. Even if y'all don't become best friends, like just an invite and just yeah. one hang is always worth it. Um, so people also asked about post-grad, which I was like, this is so good because mm-hmm. I've been talking to a couple people about post-grad and how the college life is so fun, but it's not necessarily set you up for a real life yeah. super great, no. which is no. kind of ironic because the whole thing is to set you up and prepare yeah. you for life. And it does in so many ways, but then in so many other ways, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people really struggle post-grad because they're like, wait, like, like, how do I find my people? Yeah. Like, how do I find my purpose? How do I step into all of this thing that I just worked four years to yeah. become? So what was post-grad like for you just navigating, coming off of such a high of being yeah. at Liberty to back to uh, West Monroe? Yeah. It, I mean, it's interesting in the fact of, like, I just remember getting done with college, and it's, like, until college, like, everything's kind of, like, laid out for you. Mm-hmm. Like, even That's just true. the education system of when you're younger, like, you're just going from grade to grade to grade. Yeah. Like, you always kind of know what's coming, and you're not having to – Think about true. it or prepare, yeah. and then you do in the sense of like, okay, where am I going to go to school? Yep. Or if you're going to school, and but if you go to school, then it's another four years, and then all of a sudden you're like done, and it's yeah. like, okay, well, what, what now? Yeah. And um, I think it's a very, it's an exciting time of life, but also kind of like intimidating. Yeah, um, super. Because it's not laid out. No, it's not. It's not. You're just yeah. kind of having to be like, okay, well, here here we go. Yeah. And I think, I think too, to that point, it's like not only has it been laid out for you the whole time, but everyone's also in the same season yes. as you the whole time. Yes. Everyone's in first point. grade. Everyone's in second. Uh-huh. Everyone's in middle school. Everyone's in high school. Everyone's in college. Yeah. And then it's like some people are getting their dream job. Some people yes. are moving back home with their parents. Some people are getting married. Some people are having kids. Yeah. And it's so hard to not compare yourself to where other, other people are in their yeah. seasons of life well, why did they get their dream job mm-hmm. and I have no idea what I want to do? Yeah. Or why are they married and have a kid and I haven't dated anybody, you yeah. know? But it's like there's nothing wrong with you because mm-hmm. you're in a different season. Everyone's in a different season. Yeah. And I think it just feels so dramatic because yeah. for your entire life since pre-K, you've done the same thing yes. as everyone your age. And then you hit your 20s and everyone starts doing stuff at different times. Yeah. And so that comparison, it's like so hard to not compare yourself but so vital that you don't compare yourself yes because you're just in a different place yeah um so you and John Luke y'all were married though so y'all got to go yes. through this whole thing together which yeah. is so unique and a lot of people ask of course which I know you get asked this all the time but what was it like getting married so young yeah. and do you have any advice to people who are getting engaged at 19 years old yes. <laughs> like y'all did yes oh my goodness I look back at pictures of us and y'all I'm were like, babies I can't believe how young we were we literally were engaged the, the day John Luke I think it was the day he turned 19 and I had it was because it was his birthday. Eighteen, and I see like if I saw an eighteen and nineteen year old getting engaged right now, I'd be like, "Oh my gosh, they're so little. They're just yeah. babies." Yeah. But like we were, we were yep. ready to make the decision, and just felt like you know we were doing what we wanted to do, and yeah. um, and I don't know. I've always said we we've just gotten to grow up together, yeah. And I think there is like the good and the bad of that. Yeah. Like it's been so sweet. We've had. I mean, we've been married seven years. Which we've is been so together crazy. for like eight years. Yeah. Because a lot of people our age, when they say how long they've been married, it's like two years, three years. Yeah. Yeah. And are like seven. Everybody's like, what? I know. I know. It's just this like really crazy. Cool. And I feel like, um, you know, one of the pluses was you're not having to take these two kind of like adult lives. Like my parents, their first marriage, they got married, they were 32 and 39. Mm-hmm. And they had very established like. Yeah, adult routine, lives things. that you're meshing where for us we were kind of getting to create that together and still yeah. are like we're still yeah. only like 26 but creating that together and we've had so many experiences together yeah. but then I do think like the hard part of that can be we were 19 we had things we needed to learn and yeah. like the growing up together like there's growing pains yeah. and I feel like there have been times where, you know, we were hurt by the other one over things we just didn't know yet. Yeah. Like just learning, growing and like learning and yeah. becoming adults. And yeah. um, I don't like know. I think that's the only kind of looking back on it. I feel like the only thing to be more pre- like I could have been more prepared for, which you can't. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You're growing up. You're young. You're learning. Yeah. You're, it's just such a growing learning time of yeah. life.
Y'all, honestly, I would not even be doing this recording right now if it was not for a Bible. And I think it's pretty easy to say that God's Word has completely changed my life, which leads me to why I'm so excited to tell you about one of our partners, Crew. So many of you listening right now have access to a Bible, whether that's by phone or a physical copy, or you could at least go to a local bookstore and buy one if you wanted to. But imagine if you couldn't just hop on Amazon and buy one. I mean, we can even prime it, okay? It's crazy. Imagine if you weren't even allowed to have one. There are so many people around the world who can't get a Bible. And this is ultimately why I love Crew and I'm excited to be one of their partners. Crew is one of the largest evangelical organizations with over 25,000 missionaries in almost every country. And they're sharing the hope of Jesus by giving Bibles to people all over the world in their own heart language. But here's where they need your help. For only $21 a month, you can provide three people with Bibles each and every month, which is really amazing. When you sign up, that's going to provide three Bibles with a monthly gift of $21 as a thank you. So Crew will provide meals to five hungry families through their humanitarian and aid ministry and you'll receive a copy of my devotional book live on purpose we want to make sure you feel loved as you are loving other people just text sadie to 71326 to help today imagine how much of a change this gift could actually have in someone's life honestly i think it's the best change that it could ever have in anybody's life so text sadie to 71326 that's sadie s-a-d-i-e to 71326 to help now or visit give.crew that's c-r-u.org o-r-g slash sadie and get involved today our counselor always says you don't know what you don't know honey. exactly you don't <laughs> it's you true don't. you don't know what you don't know yeah. and you know that's true for any stage of life yeah. when you're entering a new stage or a new season you just don't know what you don't know and yeah. you have to give each other the grace yes for that, that uh-huh. you don't know what you don't know, they don't know yeah. what they don't know, and you're learning it together. And that you both have the best intentions. Yes, that is crucial. Yeah. Believing yeah. that you have the best intentions, the believing that the other person isn't out to hurt yes. you or mm-hmm. get you. They're literally, they love you, yeah. and y'all are just like see things differently sometimes. And yeah. I think it's a really humbling thing, like marriage in general. It's mm-hmm. very refining and humbling it is. because you're going to have off moments. Mm-hmm. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have a bad attitude. Yeah. You know, you're going to have the whole thing in front of someone that you love. Yep. So it's very humbling, but it it's is. like, it's so good for you, you know, yeah. if you embrace it and let it happen. And so for those getting married young, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were relatively young. We weren't 18 and 19, but we were 22 and yeah. um, 21, 22. And I would say the same thing. Like, mm-hmm. it's just be okay with like the growth that has to be done and the growing pains and like humble yourself to um, allow the change that has to happen Mm -hmm. in both of your lives because a lot of changes are going to happen so fast and it's just, it's just humbling, but it's good. It is. Humility. Refining. Yes, and refining good. and <laughs> humbling and refining are things that you never want to walk through. No, but, but these you're are so all they make you who you yes, are. Yes, yes. They you're make so right. you who you are, they make your relationship what it is. Yes. Um Obviously, a lot of people have questions about being a mom because you're the cutest little mom, and Sheffy and Ella are just dreams. They're just the cutest kids ever. Honey's best friends, they for are. sure. They are. Um, this is so funny. Honey and Ella, just for just a little behind the scenes, we're doing a photo shoot yesterday, <laughs> and we were, like, so excited because Mary Kate's like, Ella's going to do her 18 months. Y'all should come, and, like, Honey is a little bit crazier than Ella, but I was like, she it's going to be great. We're going to do it, and we get there, and Honey just absolutely falls apart, but it was so funny because then Ella starts crying, and we're like, why is Ella crying? Because it's kind of rare that Ella uh-huh. gets upset, and Ella just wanted Christian to hold her, and we were like, Christian? She literally was just pointing to Christian and like wanting to it go see him. It was the funniest thing ever. Yeah. Like these kids are just hilarious. They, and they are. just make life so sweet. So whenever y'all, did y'all know y'all were like ready to have kids? Is that something that y'all felt like prepared for? Or were y'all just like, okay, it's time? Yeah, we just, I don't know. I just feel like when it comes to like, at least in my experience, I feel like that just desire to have like a baby and then another baby is just like such a God given. Yeah. Because it, I feel like it just comes on so strong out yeah. of nowhere. At least that's been like the case for me with both of mine like especially with Ella I just remember being like definitely don't want another one yet and then all of a sudden the next month I'm like okay I really would like another one I think that would be awesome and fun and but then also the of just kind of being like I just remember with John Shepard I was like okay I feel ready and John's like I feel ready and we're like let's just see what what happens happens. like let's let's just put it in God's hands and just see what happens and then 
before we knew it. And it's a perfect timing. Yeah. That's so sweet. Oh my gosh. So what advice do you have for young moms? Because, or moms of all ages, because I don't think it matters if you're younger or you're old. Having a baby is, can send you for a doozy sometimes. Yeah. It's going to be like, woo, my whole life just changed. Yeah. But it's the best thing ever. Yeah, it it's is. just crazy. What's some advice you give to moms out there who are in the, the, the littles yeah. age? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, um, I don't know, one of the biggest things I learned this year in regards to like my kids, my role as a mother, and then my role also as a wife was just like the power of prayer. Mm, that's and um, I just feel like if kids will show you anything, it'll show you, I need you, God. Yeah. Like I need you. I'm relying on you. I'm dependent on you. Yeah. And um, one thing that my counselor told me last year, and this was just so life-changing, I feel mm-hmm. like for me. I was telling her some problem I was having with John Shepard, like some behavioral problem. And I was just kind of like, I don't I don't know what to do. Because it's yeah. funny. Until you have kids, you're like, I know that we've got to be consistent. Yeah. But then it comes down, you're like, consistent with what? Yeah. Like, How do you do consi- that? Like, what do I do? Like, what yeah. do I even be consistent with, you know, when it comes to actually, like, training and yep. disciplining? And um, I was talking about this with my counselor. And um, I was like, it's just, there's so many moments where I'm like, I could do this or I could do that. And, like, I just don't know what's best for him mm-hmm. in that moment. And um, I was asking, like, what parenting books would you recommend? And she did give me one that was really good. But she also said, Mary-Kate, the one person who's going to know what you should do in every single moment is God. Hmm. And you have access to Him. That's every good. single time you need to discipline, every single time you don't know what to do, That's literally good. just ask Him. Hmm. And that was just such a, like, wow. I was just like, I've never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, literally, yeah. like, He knows exactly what John Shepard needs right That's now. He so knows exactly good. what Ella needs. Yep. Like. Sometimes they might need a little, like, time out. Sometimes they might need a hug, you know. Yeah. And sometimes I just don't know. And just really seeing the power of prayer. That's so and, um, good. I've just, I think also seeing, like, that verse has just kind of come to life of, talks about, I think in Proverbs, like, a woman has the power to tear down or build up her house. Mm. And it's just, like, been mind-blowing me, the power wow. of, like, a woman that she yeah. holds within her family. Wow. Um, And I think when you realize that, you mm. realize just, like, how vital – like yeah. you are as a mom and yeah. how it's no, it's no small role. It's no, yeah. you're like, even though some days it looks like maybe just changing diapers or cleaning up a high chair for the millionth time, <laughs> like yep. it's important. And like yeah. your role in their life is just like Gosh. so important. That's and so just good. even just my role in like praying over them and yeah. praying for my kids. Like my prayers as like a wife and mother, they're going to hold more than anyone else's prayers for my kids so true. and my husband, you know. And so, so really – covering them it's so good every day and asking God like every day gosh I love that what to do what a great gosh what a great verse too it's so like sobering of a verse to be like you could tear down your house yeah. or you could build up your house and I don't think it's mutual you no do, you're either doing, you're one, doing or one or the other, other. you're not just yeah doing that's so that true thing. but that but that you really can build your house up mm-hmm. you really can and and it's not all on you yeah. like it's God through yeah. you and that's so true the power of prayer it's I found myself already like remembering that too of like oh I need to pray like mm-hmm. like I'll pray for honey all the time but not pray like for her attitude sometimes you yeah. know and then I'm like oh I can pray I'm like Lord like help her like calm her spirit you know just stuff like that like god like help me to calm her in these moments when she gets so worked up and then i'm like wow like you're teaching me how to do that you know because i I pray for her in these big things and i pray for her in these sweet little prayers but then i'm like how do i pray for her in the everyday moments like i pray for myself to give me patience give me peace it's like yeah god totally oh and it's so cool because at the end of the day when i thank god for her i'm like god thank you for the joy she carried today like it was so sweet and like the peace that you gave her in these moments uh-huh. and like, and then it's just so cool. Cause you can see God already working through yes. them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that is just the coolest thing yeah. ever. And yeah. like the fruit of who God is like love, joy, peace, all these things. It's like, that's not something that just has to be like said. It's how like people live. Yeah. And so like already seeing the fruit of God, like on her mm-hmm. life, like the love that she gives and like the peace that she has sometimes and the joy that she carries. I'm like, yes. that's Jesus in yes, you. Like it it's is. just the sweetest thing ever. Yeah. Gosh, I love that. Um, you are such a mom that I look up to. You, you've just parented your kids so well. You really do such a good job with them and and it shows. And I know kids are kids and kids will be kids and you know, they're going to be crazy, but you've done such a good job with them. Um, one question someone had that I was like, yes, we got to answer this question. Someone said, how do you, or do you have any advice about just like not comparing yourself to other moms, which I, that was really hard for me. Um, and it wasn't in the way that I thought, like I was comparing myself in the way of like, 
breastfeed or not breastfeed, mm. what they breastfed. So I should do this because that's the best way to do it. But then like, it wasn't working for me. So yeah. then I was like, I felt guilty for not breastfeeding yeah. because like my friends were breastfeeding. And I was like comparing myself in those things and like experiencing like the mom guilt because of my comparison. Yeah. Um, and But I know that like everybody has it different. Like you yeah. might compare yourself in other ways. But do you have any advice for just like not comparing yourselves to other moms? Because yeah. I know that can be so hard for everybody. Yeah. One thing I'm always trying to do is continue learning. And listen, y'all, there are some seasons I want to know more about business and grow knowledge, but then there are some seasons where I just want to get real good at jumping rope, okay? Anybody feel me? It's like different hobbies just come and go. Like I said, there's always so much to learn about no matter what season of life you're in. And with Masterclass, you can learn from the best anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace, which I love. No pressure, just go at your pace. Masterclass is legit accessible from anywhere, whether you're on the go or at your home. You can watch it from your phone, web, or Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Roku, and take classes on a wide variety of topics. So I've taken classes as short as 10 minutes long. Um, you can take classes that are super short, just on the go. And actually, um, I took Serena Williams classes on how to hit the tennis ball, and I do think I saw improvement. And I got my dad master class for Christmas one year as a gift, and so it really is a gift that keeps on giving. You can learn so much. The classes come with their own materials too. You can just click and download. Or maybe you're learning how to cook, and you can just click save the recipes so so great so easy to learn so many great things there are 11 different categories and hundreds of video lessons from over 150 world-class instructors i love my class on how to write from idea to ending from james patterson i love to write obviously and i finished working on a book with my husband which was really fun and sometimes writing can be super chaotic and wild and so it's nice to take a class from someone who knows what they're doing and really help with just the organization of that what i love about this class is how the instructor walks you through how to take Take that and follow practical steps to finish a writing piece. I know a lot of people get into writer's block and this is a great way to kind of help you get out of that. Like I said, you can do anything from tennis to um, writing. I highly recommend you checking it out and you can get unlimited access to every class. As a Whoa That's Good podcast listener, you're actually going to get 15% off your annual membership. So go to masterclass.com slash woe. That's masterclass.com slash woe for 15% off a of masterclass. Well, I heard, um, I think it was Lisa Turkers, and I think it's actually like, it's a verse, but it talks about, and it's a verse in like, um, like the Passion Translation or something a little different, but mm -hmm. it basically says like, do the creative best with what you've got. Mm, and she good. shared that and then talked about um, the, the image that she gave was this, uh, I think it was a, a violinist was mm. broke a string or something right before they were supposed to perform and they just did it anyway with what they had wow. and they just kind of made it work and did, cool. you know, and I just, I have thought about that. I think that's one of the best pieces of, of advice in life I've ever been that's given so good. because we are all so different. Like mm -hmm. every person's different. Our strengths, our weaknesses, our situations, like every marriage is different. Every yeah. family's different. And like, we just, there is literally no point in comparing ourselves to one another because so true. I feel like the older I've gotten, the more I've realized like, okay, our family's going to look different because we're two different people. Yep. And there's no point in comparison, comparing yep. that because, honestly, there's just so too much at stake. Yeah, You know, I just see my kids, and I'm like, we're going to do the best with what we've got. Like, yep. And there's different seasons where things may be, I don't know, more difficult than others. Yep. And, um, and you should – I think that's what God asks of us yeah. is just taking what He's given us. You it's know, good. he draws our boundary lines. He knows where we've got, where we are. I love things. that. Yeah. That's sort of a, like, that is the most overlooked thing that God draws your he boundary does. lines. He does. He like, does. so true. And like, to me, that just gives you so much freedom to know yeah. that like God draws this boundary line. That's why I have a wave tattoo mm. on my arm because it talks about um, how the sand yeah. is literally a boundary yeah, line for the, for the ocean. Sea. Like. It talks about that in Jeremiah. I'm like, that is crazy yeah. that God would even set a boundary for something so huge yes. and so massive, but yet there is a boundary that it will not pass. Yes. And it's like, thinking about that in life, doesn't that just bring you so much yes, security? Yes, it does. Like, and just that He's going to equip you yes. for what you, He's got for you. Like, totally. He's going to give you exactly what you need totally. for your kids, your family. It's good. Like, and He good. has. Like, do you, your best with stewarding it yep. and he made you to do it and yeah it's so cool because me you and Rebecca all had baby girls the yeah. same year and what's really cool is like I never found myself like 
comparing myself to the two of y'all and what was really cool is like the three of us parent differently and like we have different families we have different ways of life mm -hmm. but like we've all really cheered each other on in that yeah. and I think it's really sweet and I think one reason I didn't compare myself to y'all and I might have compared myself to other people in life is like y'all never put any pressure on me mm. to like do what y'all did and like y'all encouraged me and you're like hey this is what I did that was helpful if I asked or this is what yeah but it wasn't like you have to do this and yeah I actually had one of my friends text me after um she'll probably listen to this podcast and she's gonna text me and be like oh no you're talking about me but <laughs> she texted me after and she was like hey I'm so sorry if I ever put any pressure on you um to like breastfeed like we mm. did and I'm sorry if I put any pressure on you to to have like a natural birth like I did um, because like she had just said so much about those things. I feel like I needed to do yeah. that. And um, I just said, thank you so much for saying this. I was like, you didn't mean to do that, but I, I did kind of yeah, you know, compare myself it. to her and felt like I needed to do it this way. Mm -hmm. and I need to do it that way. And at the end of the day, like my body was not doing that. And I would have put me and honey at risk yeah. if I would have done it that way. And with breastfeeding, it just wasn't happening. And so I just saw like real fast. And I remember like in the hospital after having honey, after feeling that I had this moment with the Lord and I was just like, I know Lord, like you're just telling me this right now as a lesson for my whole entire life and parenting, like not to look to the left or the right. Like yeah. you've equipped me to be the mom mm -hmm. that I'm going to be to honey. You built me to birth her. <laughs> you yeah. built me to be her mom and you're going to equip me to do it. And like, our journey is not going to be based on like, what did they do? What did they do? Yeah. It's like, what do you have for us? Yes. And so I just love that you're saying that because I experienced that literally in the hospital. And yeah. I'm so glad though, that God began to like prune that in my life and really get that out of me. Just literally laying in the hospital bed yeah. after having honey. I think honey was, you know, actually in the nursery and I was pumping and I was like <laughs> having this moment with the Lord. And I was just like, okay, like this is so good. And I'm so glad I'm getting this now yeah. and not years later, because I know like comparing yourself can affect everything in your life. Yeah. And you don't think it is, you think it's just a mental thing and it's yeah. just affecting you, but it affects everything around mm -hmm. you. And so so good, Mary Kate. Okay, let's see. So many questions. Okay. Um, okay, someone said, what advice do you, would you give to someone who is trying to grow their relationship with the Lord? Great yeah, question. That is a great question. Um, I remember like probably two years ago at this time, um, I had this friend of mine and just after, I mean, just knowing her, but then after every conversation, I would just always leave our phone calls and I was like, there is just deeper with God. Mm. And like, I just feel like I'm not there. And mm. like, how do you get there? And like, how do you get to this deeper? And I just remember like praying mm. and just asking God, like, take me deeper. Like, I so desire to go deeper with you and know you on a deeper level. And I feel like he brought me there. Wow. And he like, he will so faithfully do that. Yeah. But it was through so much heartache and gonna so say, much yeah. suffering and like looking back at times in my life where I feel like I went deeper with God it was through that and not to like scare anyone saying that but even just the the goodness of that of like we're all gonna go through really hard things we're mm -hmm. all gonna go through heartbreaking devastating things that's just life yeah and we can do it with him or without him yeah and I just remember like inviting God into that last year and just seeing him work and um just seeing his faithfulness of like, Lord, I want to go deeper with you and him meeting me deeper, meeting me in these really difficult moments. And I never once felt um, like abandoned by him or forsaken yep. by him. And that was in such a vulnerable time of life. And I don't know. It's just mm -hmm. I look back on it and I'm so grateful for it. Yep. And like even so grateful for the pain of that mm -hmm. because it brought me closer yep. to him. It's good. And I think too, like, during that time, one of the books that I read was a John Eldridge book. It was called Walking with God. But I think one of the biggest things I learned last year, and you don't have to learn this through suffering. You don't have to learn that you like can start literally any day, but it's just yeah. that God will talk to you yeah. and he will speak to you. And like, mm -hmm. you can ask him every single day for things. And I feel like that book was just a really good practical good. kind of, you know, yeah. teaches you through like, okay, what do you even ask him? What do you, how do you do how this? Do you talk how do you, to God? yes. Yeah. And I feel like just learning that last year and in going into parenting, like I mm -hmm. said that, it's like asking questions about that mm -hmm. um, and then praying for one of the things I prayed for was just like strategies of wisdom. And I pray for that like every day of just God, show me, give me wisdom, give me very practical. Yeah. What do you want for me for this day? I love that. Wisdom is one of the most powerful things I think you can pray for. And I think yes. like we saw it in the Bible. Um, 
oh, who was it? Solomon, when he prayed for wisdom, like mm-hmm. that was the thing he asked God for and yeah. God gave it. So like, yeah. we know like God loves to give wisdom yes, to people. He does. And I remember on my like, it was like 18th or 19th, probably 19th birthday, I was at a church service and um, the pastor was like talking about asking God for wisdom. And they say like, the younger you are, like the better, Mm -hmm. like to start asking God for wisdom. And I did. And I truly believe that like so many of the things that I've been able to do, I'm like, I would not have been able to do unless like the Lord specifically gave me wisdom beyond my years to do it. Yeah. And parenting is such a thing for that, like asking Mm -hmm. God for the wisdom in those little moments what to do, asking for grace, you yeah. know, in the moments yeah. to have wisdom, have yeah. enough wisdom to do the right thing. And it's so true about going deeper with God, like being a lot of times in the harder moments. But mm-hmm. it made me think about how like, you know, we all love these like mountaintop moments of life, but like it's in the valley where mm-hmm. it says, even in the valley of the shadow of death, like fear no evil, yeah. for I'm with you, for my rod and my staff, they comfort you. Yeah. And so I think it's like in those valley moments, you feel yeah. God so near because like one, he promises he's there. Yes. And two, like his rod and his staff comfort you. They they, they guide you just like yeah. a shepherd would to a sheep. Yes. And when you see like videos of sheep following their shepherd, yes. it's like the coolest thing ever that God compares us to that so often. Yes. And so I think God's presence is just so known in the valley because you're at the end of yourself yeah. like you need that comforter mm-hmm. um and the mountaintops are great but it's the valley that you really made yeah. you know and that's the valley that you really feel that nearness and that closeness with him yes. so i totally agree I've, I've experienced that in my life so many times and it's not that god's not there in the great moments mm-hmm. god's there too and there there are incredible moments to be shared with the lord but there's just such a an evidence of yeah. his nearness when you're in those in those tough seasons of life if you invite him into it. Yeah. Um, someone said how to grow in faith and maintain an intimate relationship with the Lord while raising little ones. Yes. And I was just talking to someone about this today because it said like each stage of life, I feel like you also like you kind of have to relearn like, okay, God, like what does our relationship yeah. look like in this stage? Because when you're single, you know, like you have all the time in the world to just sit with the Lord and like yeah. not to say it's still not hard because you still have to make time to like be you know, specific about when you're going to sit with him, what you're going to talking to him, praying, that kind of stuff. But then whenever you're married, Uh like it's a little bit harder because you're like, okay, you have your thing. I have my thing. How do we come together? Okay, this is good. We got it. And then when you have kids, you're like, when the yeah. heck do I uh, like yeah. you know spend time with the Lord? Yes. And so, how what's that look like for you? I know I've been loving seeing on Instagram you've been establishing more of a routine, and yep. what's that look I'm like? All the things. Yeah, I feel like for me, it's just been just so much being in the Word, and I know yeah. that's like our whole goal, you know, of like oh, we yeah. know we need to do it, but I think for me, it it literally took the Lord getting me to this place of like, just like I said, like just such a I need you. I literally need you. I need you more than anything else right now. I need you more than my cup of coffee right now, you know? And, um, so I think realizing that need, like he'll bring you there, you know, Mm -hmm. he'll, he can bring you to that place of like, okay, I really need you. And, um, and then in that, just, I try to make sure, you know, I'm just up. Like I really try to be up before my kids, which I know is a goal. And sometimes like like making the newborn days, yeah. That wasn't going to happen because no. I was already up all night. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not about grace. To, yeah, yeah, that's the other thing I was going to say. It's just grace. Grace of like, God's yeah. gentle with you. Yes. He's going to be gentle with you. He's not demanding this no. and he's not mad at you for not. Yeah. Like, he's going to be gentle. And he is not defined to a quiet time. Mm-mm. God's in the 24 7. Man, God is with you when you're rocking that baby in there, yeah. crying for two hours, and you're like all of a sudden singing worship songs. Yeah. Like that's like I think I think that's a moment with mm-hmm. the Lord. Like it doesn't have to be like just by yourself yeah. with your cup of coffee, with your Bible out. It doesn't have to like, be perfect. No. Mm-hmm. And I think like one time I felt like God was disappointed in me because I wasn't creating that space for mm-hmm. for like just me and him. Then I'm like, no, God's not disappointed. Like yes. my whole life is lived for him. Like yeah. I'm disappointed on an expectation that I put on myself yeah. that God didn't even put on me, you know? Yes. And like God is in it all. And I yes. know if you can establish routines to yeah. help, like beautiful. I yeah. think that does help. And I think being your word is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, I feel like the Lord spoke something to me this morning. It's so convicting that you even said this. And I was like, have you ever felt like the Lord said something and you're like, did I hear that? I, yeah. I didn't hear that right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you're like, whoo. But it was so true. I was literally like, I was going from sermon to sermon to sermon on my YouTube, like uh-huh. the past couple of days. I've just been like trying to find a sermon that would just like speak to me. Uh-huh. And I've just kind of been like in a lull. And it's not the yeah. sermon's fault, right? Yeah. And I know that. So I've just been like skipping around. And then today I was just like, has just been feeling like discontent with like, uh, what I've been learning from like, cause I haven't been learning a lot lately. Yeah. Like I, like I love to learn. 
So I'm like going through and um, I felt like the Lord literally spoke to me. And he said, you are trying to hear what everyone else mm. has heard from me and have it set and heard for yourself. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, like I'm trying to hear what everyone else is reading. I'm trying to hear what everybody else is hearing. Yeah. But like I haven't made time to read for myself, yeah. to hear for myself. And that's where my discontentment was coming from. Yeah. Not because these sermons are incredible and their revelation is amazing. It's because I need to sit with the Lord and hear yeah. what God's saying to me and I need to get in the word and I need to read it that's active and alive to get my spirit and I was like oh man you know and I was like that is so true Lord and I was literally thinking about that today and you were just saying that like you have to get in the word I'm like it's true like Mm -hmm. you can listen to other people's sermons all day long you can scroll Instagram and read other people's captions and those are great but it does not it's not the living word like the living word is like actually opening the pages and like reading for yourself and those are the moments where you know you sit here and you say in this verse in Proverbs is Mm -hmm. this and that's something that spoke to you and Mm -hmm. it's like active and alive in this moment People are listening all over the world in this podcast and going, wow, I have the power to build up or tear down because that's yeah. the word, yeah. you know? And so it's so true. We've said a lot of words in this podcast, but the, the word that's going to change people are the words of scripture yeah. you know, that we've spoken. Um, and hopefully the wor- the other words that we've said are going to move people to that, Yeah, um, which is just so cool. Yeah. I love it. You're, I mean, you really are inspiring. And I love that you get up early and you go on these walks and stuff. Yeah. Um, and for me, I'm so not a morning person, but my time is at night. Yeah. Like when I put Let's honey down. Do whenever. Oh, me and Christian, we don't do this all the time, but when we do, we it's so fruitful. We'll just turn on worship and light a candle mm. and just sit and both read. And it's just Man. so nice because yeah. um, someone one time told us that they always light a candle in their quiet times because mm. it represents the presence of God, the fire. That's really cool. And we've been doing that, and it really is so cool. I think I saw a candle at y'all's house the other day, actually. Yeah, that makes doing more doing sense it. now. I have it, like, right in the middle. It's, like, kind of a random yeah, place for I a candle. Yeah, I saw that. That's, That's why. Funny. But it's just sweet. It is. And I think there's so much, like, God is the ultimate source. I remember hearing this in college, and I just feel like I've actually, I've thought about this for years, but just really experienced it this year. But, like, we're all going to the same source. Yeah. Like, why not just go yourself? It's good. Like, yeah. it's not the same thing going through someone else. And even, yeah. like, me sharing a verse that meant something to you, that is living and, you know, can all change someone else's life. Mm-hmm. But what made it even more life-changing for me mm-hmm. was that I heard God speak it directly to me. Yep. Yeah. And feeling God's care for me yep. in that moment. Yeah. And that was one thing that, like, like I said earlier about God speaking daily. That's what I was learning to pray this year. Is I would literally just sit down, and I still will, but I'll sit down with my Bible, just be like, okay, like, what do you want me to read today? Mm -hmm. And I'll just sit there, and I'll just, and sometimes I feel like listening to the voice of God, like, it's very quiet, and sometimes you might be like, did I really hear him right? But like, time after time, it wasn't this, I I don't feel like I've ever heard God's voice just like audibly Mm -hmm. in my ear, for anyone even just wondering, like, what that even is like, but it's just like this impression of like, Psalm 138, you know, like just, I can just feel this and then I'll just go and time after time, it has been like exactly what's been on my heart, exactly something that's been bothering me. And I feel like that's been like the life changing thing for me is like, oh, God sent that to me today. Like he is involved in this day. He cares about me today. Yeah. That's um, so good. It's so true because it's not audible. It's an impression on your heart. And you're like, did I really hear God? But then after, after that word, like permeates in you or you, or you follow that voice or that prompting, yeah. it's like, you're like, oh my gosh, like yeah. I cannot deny that I just yes. heard the Lord. You and know? that's what I feel like it was for me. Like, especially when I was first learning to hear him, it was like, did I really hear that? And I was like, I'm just going to go with it. And then yeah. I would just go with it. And then so true. Oftentimes there and was there the will confirmation be right there. There will be times that you think you hear and then you go and it's like, you know, uh, Deuteronomy 4, and you're yeah. like, wait, okay, like, sure maybe not. not. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe I <laughs> I think you know, something was yeah. wrong. The static was bad. Yeah. But no, but, but God's always working. He's always speaking. And, and I've said this before, even in times that I've been reading and I thought, I don't think I'm getting anything out of this. Yeah. It's, it's months later that I go, oh, remember when there I read was. Second Kings and yes. this analogy just like comes alive. Yes. So that's what, I think that's the cool thing about the word being active and alive. Yes. Like 
it, it like breathes life in random moments. Yeah, it does. It's tucked in you. I'm always surprised, like when I'm talking to people and mm-hmm. scriptures start coming out of me, and I'm like, I didn't even know I knew that. Yeah. Like, but it's like coming out in the right moment at the right yes. time. That's a, this is like when the Lord speaks a word, like his word does not return to him void. Mm-hmm. Like it accomplishes what it's sent to mm-hmm. do. And it really does. Like yeah. it's not your time with the Lord, whether it feels mundane or whether it feels like I'm not getting anything, it always mm-hmm. sets out to do what it's meant to yeah. do. And it will That's not good. return to him empty handed um gosh Mary this is so rich this is so good I'm so glad you were on this podcast and now I know for a fact everyone's gonna want you back um which is good because we have like 50 hundred more 50 hundred that's a word we're gonna have 50 hundred more questions to ask you but thank you for being just a heck of a mom that we can all look up to and learn from and um being someone who seeks the lord and pours out your wisdom because it was encouraging to me to hear how many just spiritual questions people had for you Mm -hmm. and it's so encouraging for me to sit down with you and hear the things that come out of your mouth because most of the time we're Literally interrupted a million times by kids. <laughs> we this is the to just first time like in, in a while. long time. We've said and not been interrupted by yeah. kids screaming and being crazy yeah. and um, listening to We Don't Talk About Bruno and yeah. the Congo a uh, hundred times. So <laughs> yeah. this was great. I'm really thankful for you. Thanks for doing this. Thank you for having me.